Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about rounding in physics. In other words, rounding your final answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, one button which might actually be useful for you with your calculator or on your calculator is this SD button here. So that could come in useful when you want to actually round your final value. That hopefully should make more sense once we go through the two examples. But before we do, I'm going to show you this. This is the first rule when rounding. So it says answers should have up to two figures more or one figure less than the number in the data with the fewest significant figures. Now that's how it's written for teachers who are marking your exam. So answers should have up to two figures more or one figure less than the number in the data with the least significant figures or the fewest significant figures. Maybe what I should do is show you an example. So here's the first example here. Now don't worry if you don't know the equation that's used for this. Really what we're interested in is understanding how to actually round the final answer. That's all that's important. So the question says the mass of a child's bicycle is 5.76 kilograms. Calculate the weight of the bicycle. And I can tell you that the equation we use for weight W is M, which is the mass in kilograms times G, which is the gravitational field strength. And that's on Earth, of course. We're assuming that this bicycle is on Earth. Now, M we know, that's 5.76. G we don't know, but we would look at the very start of the exam on the data sheet, and that would tell us that on Earth, the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now, you know what I'll do? I'll just enter these values in, and then we'll round the final answer. So we'll do the substitution first. So that's 5.76 times 9.8. Let's find out what value that would actually give. So 5.76 times 9.8, and that gives us this. Oh, wonderful. Now, first of all, don't write fractions as your final answer, because I would imagine if you were to write that number out, say, not as a fraction, but as a decimal, then that could well have a whole lot of significant figures, more than you would actually be allowed to write. So what we do in that case is we press our SD button to get that written like so. So we've actually got five significant figures. I'm gonna write them all down actually, 56.448. And mass is in kilograms, G, that's in newtons per kilogram. Weight, well that's a force, so it should be written in newtons. Now, the thing here is I have got five significant figures. The previous slide told us basically that your final answer should have the same number of significant figures as the number in the question with the least significant figures. So we have two numbers that we used for that calculation. This is one of them, the mass has three significant figures and G, gravitational field strength, has two significant figures. So our final answer should have two significant figures. So I just need to write that as 56 newtons. So of course I write the first two figures, but this second figure, I might have to round that up if the number after it is a five or more. So because that's a four, I didn't have to round this up. If that was 56.5, I would need to round that up to 57 or any value five or above, as I said, I would need to round that up. So there you go, that's the first rule, as I said, is to write your final answer with the same number of significant figures as the number in the question with the least number of significant figures. In this case, that was the gravitational field strength, which had two. So we wrote our final answer, two significant figures. Now, what's the second rule? Apart from, of course, don't write fractions, we also have don't write recurring decimals. So an example is 0 0.6 with a dot above it. That would represent 0 0.6666666 forever. So don't write that as your answer in physics because of course that would indicate an infinite number of significant figures. Now, that obviously breaks the first rule. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you another example. So I'm gonna press clear in the calculator and show you this second example. And again, don't worry if you don't know the equation. Move that up a second. Second example says the voltage across a resistor R1 is measured as 2.0 volts uh, when the current in the circuit is 0 0.30 amps. Calculate the resistance of resistor R1. So how I do that is I use an equation known as Ohm's law, which is V is equal to I times R. 
and to change that so that r is the subject of the equation i want to get rid of because r is multiplied by i i want to get rid of the i in this side so i would want to divide that side by i to get just r on its own so if i'm dividing this right hand side by i i would also need to divide this by i so that'll give me r is equal to v over i and therefore r is v over i substitute the two values so our voltage is 2.0 our current is 0 0.30 now hopefully you can already see that this is written to two significant figures this one's written to two significant figures so the final answer should really be written as two significant figures so let's calculate that i've got 2.0 divided by 0 0.30 and that gives us 20 divided by 3. Again, remember, don't write your final answers as fractions. What I would need to do, of course, is to press that SD button, and it then tells us this, 6.6. .6. Now, if I used to write 6.6 .6 as the final answer, in case you didn't know resistance is written in, or is measured in ohms, if I used to write the final answer as 6.6 .6 ohms, I've lost a mark, because there's a dot above that 6 which obviously that's a recurring decimal. It shows that the resistance is actually 6.6666666 going on forever ohms. So press the SD button again, and that'll actually show you that. Although this has been slightly rounded up. <clears throat> so to actually write that in an appropriate number of significant figures, that would be written as six point, and looking at the calculator, I've got 6.6 but the value after that second six is also a six. So because this is five or more, I have to round up that second figure to 6.7 ohms. So there you go, remember those rules. As I said, the first rule was just telling us that we should be writing a final answer to the same number of significant figures as the number in the question with the least number of significant figures. And then the second rule, as I said, don't write recurring decimals. Now, there was the other thing that I mentioned as well. Don't write those final answers as fractions either. Otherwise, that could be that that fraction actually would have more significant figures than allowed. There we have it. So that's us for this video. We'll see you next time.